What do you get when you mix Bella, Turbo Nerd, B.O., Edgelord, Children, and Dogs? The answer? A lonely ass motherfucker. But, 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 but what do you mean by that, Tony? What does Isabella yank? Some random person holding their finger to their nose and a dog have in common. First of all, by dog, I mean almost every animal, especially mammal. But I want to introduce this scene of the former coach of the German soccer team to exemplify what I mean. All right. All right. So check this out. Okay. Let's see. This is one I wanted to show you. Let me see. Wait for it. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh my Oh no 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 what the fuck did he took out he shoved his fingers up his <laughs> oh, imagine you're in, imagine you're in the team and he he grabs you and he give he gives you a little slap in the face. You 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 go get him, son. <laughs> oh. There's more compilations of him on the internet doing that, but basically he was very nervous because of the of all the stress he was going through, and he was he wasn't really aware of what he was doing. I mean, he's doing that in front of millions of people, and he's not even thinking about it. That's how subconscious that action is. Actually, in short words, his own smell is bringing him comfort. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> gross. <laughs> no, notice how he smells himself? In psychology, this action is referred as a self-comforting action, an action you subconsciously make to relieve stress in a scenario where you feel alone, like the coach there. <laughs> Besides being gross, <laughs> it's also a way for you, your brain to feel companionship. When you feel all alone by yourself like my coach here with the feeling of uh, all of the weight of the responsibility of the whole team on his shoulders and the entire world seeing him judging him or rooting him as he puts his fingers on his so what's the science of all this and the answer to that is smell yeah smell there's other body language like patting yourself or hugging yourself but in this case, we're going to focus on smell. So, from dogs to Bella to that weird kid who used to sit all by himself on the lunch table by the corner you never talked to because you didn't like being around him or most likely because that kid was you. <laughs> smell is more important to your brain than what you imagine. Not only as a sense designed to warn you about the presence of infectious elements or on food or places, but also as a tool to catalog social compatibility. Like dogs smelling each other to greet, you might think you don't use smell like that anymore. It's a human, but you do only in a more subtle way. There has been many studies made over the years to determine the link between smell and sexual compatibility and it has been shown that smell and sexual compatibility are still very ingrained in our brains even though we don't really we don't really realize it and we're not conscious about it it has shown that women who are a couple of days from ov ovulating and if the genes of the opposite male are different enough from hers she feels more attracted to that smell she feels it less repulsive, let's say. 
even though it's BO. And it also has been determined that the smell of people who are blood related to women is less sexual compatible to them because, of course, of the incestuous connotations. Because the main reason why we feel rejected to our our own biological relatives is because as family, our immune systems are pretty much identical. So that is why having descendants with our own biological family is so likely to produce people with more dysfunctions or at the very least remain with the same weaknesses that the rest of your family had and not inherit any any new traits that might be, be stronger. So in the long run that puts the whole species in danger and that is why for the vast majority of people ever incest is such a taboo so ingrained in the brain. So even though you think you're not aware of the uses of smell in your brain and you think smell is irrelevant to you nowadays, the truth is that smell is actually really, really, really important. It's just as important as it's always been. You're just not completely conscious about it. Even more than that, there's something you do often, probably even daily. You could be doing it right, right now, watching this video as you judge and digest the words I'm speaking, and it's a pretty normal thing to do. Let me talk to you about the dome hand gesture. The brain has endless resources to cope, process, and communicate the things navigating in the mind. Thus, the reason why psychology studies body language, and one of these examples is the dome hand gesture. Made while being surprised, scared, excited, confused, intrigued, or challenged. Solving a math problem? Saw a car accident in front of you? You most likely take your hand to the mouth without even knowing it. Some random SJW is trying to prove that socialism is actually going to work this one time. Trust me, man. The problem has been that, you know, people are just, you know, too human and stuff. But if you just rebuild humans into things, it totally works, man. I identify as a plasma entity with no morals or conscience, for example. I've never felt better. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. It feels join good. Us. Yeah. Feels good in the join joining. Us. Join, join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Dome hand gesture. There is countless variations of the gestures of putting your hand or hands near or on your face, having their own connotations that I want to dive into in the future, but I want to focus on the one core aspect most of them share, and that is smell. When feeling alone, even in front of other people, your brain compensates the, the lack of the feeling of support from others with your own support, your own company, your own smell. When a person is a baby, or a child, physical contact with your parents determines a lot of the healthy development a child is going to have growing up. Although the smell of your parents and family is unconscious, it makes you feel protected and familiarized with your own kind as the mammals that we are. Dogs, for example, are highly recommended to be left with stuff that smells like you when left alone to calm them down. As a grown-up, your brain still works the same way and searches smells for support. In that particular case, your own. A little annotation. Dominant, invasive, pathological people tend to have a fetish for imposing themselves with their own smell, like peeing on their target of abuse, a very animalistic trait, feeling sexual arousal with the idea of their target smelling them. Smell is the essence of yourself and your brain picks that up as a sign of dominance. So where am I going with all this? Outcast people usually smell worse. You, you could ask the egg and chicken question and say, so are lonely people outcast because they don't shower 
or they don't shower because they are outcasts. <laughs> Jesus Christ. By the way, since I'm talking about smell, I'm going to have to confess something. I have a very potent <laughs> body odor. I mean, I used to have it a couple of years ago. Most of my upbringing, I had very terrible smell. And I used to shower every day. But as soon as I would get a little bit nervous, a little bit anxious or simply heat it up, I would reek. It used to bother me a lot, but I used to shower a lot. So, you know, sometimes you can experience that, but ever since I changed my diet and I started eating a little bit healthier, less junk food, um, stuff like that, the body odor just like completely normalized. Now I don't have to struggle with that anymore. <laughs> but I had to say it since I'm judging other people's BO. All right, so going back in track. The answer can be found on the social statement of the smell. For example, being a total edge lord like Bella, who liked using her own smell to uncomfort and impose her presence on others with her own stinky essence. I actually used to have a neck beardy friend who used to do that. It was kind of, it was kind of cringe. <laughs> or you could also use smell as a tool for social acceptance by smelling good. In a way, it's also imposing some kind of dominance on your own territory, but in the opposite side of the spectrum. The reality is that smell to us is more important than what we can imagine it to be. Smell is your essence, the chemicals you distillate from your body. Have you ever smelled someone passing by rocking that same perfume that certain someone you like wears and you feel all woozy and jelly-like? <laughs> I know I have. God damn, I know I have. <laughs> to simplify, smell is you. Whenever there's nobody else there to support you, to keep you company, you only have you. Children, for example, people are their most vulnerable confused and in need to support usually feel lonely and misunderstood because they feel powerless and clueless about their lives and their place in the world. They also usually hate taking showers. Why do dogs and cats like swimming so much but hate taking showers? Because you take their smell away, their essence, their sense of comfort on themselves. It's like Bella. A person so powerless and miserable, she has to resort to pathologically abuse whatever she can find weaker than her. From animals to people, including mentally challenged people and children. So lonely, she has no sense of real identity. Somebody so corroded inside, she has to resort to her fake, hateful, quirky smile and looking Fairly okay and normal from afar, only to make you discover that besides having no life on her void, soulless eyes, she's also one of the nastiest, grossest bitches you've ever, ever known. Yeah, she has so much fungus, she's basically poison ivy right now. Okay, to start wrapping this up, we have discovered that smell is actually way more important to our human brains as we ever imagined it was. Smell is so important to us that we still use it as a social tool. The instinct of utilizing smell is still so present on us that whenever we don't feel the support of other people, we support ourselves with the sense of our own smell. 
by taking a part of our body next to our nose or close to our nose, which is usually the fingers or some part of your, your hands. And that is called a stress reliever, a self-comforting mechanism. And whenever you see somebody doing that, whenever you see somebody doing that gesture, you can determine that that person sub subconsciously needs some kind of support that they're not getting. So they're giving it to themselves. It can go literally from solving a simple math problem to being accused of something, to being scared or repulsed. But all those things sum it up to feeling lonely and in need of support. And one reason that can very much explain why there is certain people that end up feeling the need to let their own body odor grow to such a disproportionate level, like to have constant reinforcement of their own smell to such stinkiness can be linked to a very high level of loneliness that they might be experiencing linked to depression, social inaptability, anxiety, and all those types of things. Oh, what do you think about that? Very interesting, right? <laughs> Everything always comes together. And that's why I like body language so much. I even did a, an art show about it years ago. I mean, that's such a cool ass subject. How can you not like? It? So remember, next time you're near that Yu-Gi-Oh tournament or BronyCon and you want to express yourself, don't be so mean and call them all like that. Just say, damn son, you are lonely as fuck. I know one day I was feeling so lonely I went straight up and took a nice warm shower. Made me feel so much better. I do it every day. Damn, that shit's good though. I heard bitches like motherfuckers who are in contact with water though. Totally unrelated. Don't worry about it.